So we've just been talking about the lymphatic system, and now we're going to start talking about the immune system. Separate systems, but I guess they belong in the same chapter. Um, and I am going to use my years of research experience as um, the reason that you should believe me when I tell you that the immune system kind of works like a, a computer war game like Call of Duty, right? Um, the army that is busy defending you is going to be there, I say here, in times of peace and in times of war. That means your immune system is present when you're healthy and it's on guard and it's present when you get sick, but then it really amps up and starts to fight whatever it is that is making you sick. Now, I like making an analogy with um, World at War because from the point of view of your, your immune system, your immune system doesn't know what will keep you alive and what will kill you. Weird, right? No, it doesn't know that, okay? Your immune system really only knows what is you and what is not you, right? Now, when it's working right. Now, uh, why do I even mention that? Well, it is very possible that being given your uncle's kidney is going to keep you alive. It's very possible, but your immune system doesn't know that. And since your immune system doesn't know that, your immune system, if you, your uncle's kidney goes inside of you, your immune system will just attack it and destroy it because your immune system will know that's not you, right? Um, it's also the reason that having the proper type of blood in a blood transfusion is so critical, right? So let's look at my analogy. Oh, before we jump there, I wanted to remind you about blood cells. I already gave you my spiel about how to recognize the individual ones. We are going to be talking about just some of these cells, right? We are going to be talking about neutrophils because the neutrophils, they be my favorites. So here's a, a mature neutrophil, and this is a baby neutrophil. Neutrophils are going to be some of the soldiers in um, my analogy that your immune system is like uh, an army. We are going to be talking about monocytes. Monocytes only look like monocytes while they're still in a drop of your blood. Truthfully, monocytes travel around in your blood, but as soon as they get to where they're going, they hop off. And once they hop off, they become very different looking cells. And many of those cells have got special names. But write this down. Uh, Monocytes are only monocytes while they're in your blood. When they leave your blood, they will become other kinds of cells. Particularly, we're going to be talking about macrophages and dendritic cells. We'll get back to that. And then they, we will be talking about these guys, lymphocytes, small lymphocytes. Now, lymphocytes, they are not, um, they there actually are, more than three different kinds of cells that look like that through the microscope. Um, natural killer cells, B lymphocytes that are also called B cells, and T lymphocytes that are also called T cells. So all of these we will be talking about. We will not be talking about eosinophils. We will not be talking about basophils. Even as it is, I end up having to say not enough about these guys. So here's what they look like. These guys are my favorites right here. If I've got a number two favorite, it's gonna be the eosinophil. And the reason I like these guys so much, remember that protein I discovered? It is found actually in these little things, you know, these little pink, these little things in here that are called granules, those little guys in there. That's where the protein that I discovered, that's where it is. And those are the cells that use the protein I discovered, right? Uh, these are lymphocytes. 
The lymphocytes that you see here could be a natural killer cell, could be a T cell, could be a B cell, we don't know. And then down here, this is a monocyte. And monocytes are only looking like that while they're in a drop of your blood. As soon as they leave your blood, they will become other cells like macrophages and dendritic cells. So here is my overall battle metaphor. In my overall battle metaphor, we are going to talk about these individual parts of your immune system. First, we will talk about complement. I want to make it clear that this thing that we're calling complement, complement is a molecule. It's actually different types of proteins. So when we talk about complement, we're talking about a molecule, we're talking about proteins. Then we're going to be talking about two different sets of organs, the bone marrow and the thymus, technically, technically organs, although kind of messy ones. And then we will talk about lymph nodes and the spleen, all right? Those are organs. Organs are something you can just see. If you just opened up a body to do surgery, and you, you could just look at them, right? And then the rest of these guys, the neutrophils, the NK cells, the monocytes, the B cells, and the T cells, these are cells. So complement, complement here, smaller than a cell, bone marrow, thymus, lymph node, spleen, millions of cells, and the rest of these are cells. So this is a pretty good study slide. And as a study slide, this is going to give you my basic analogy. And there are going to be questions on the exam that might say something like, what cells does Dr. Tidell think are like assassins? So there are two reasons to learn my battle metaphor. One is because I think it's useful so that you've got a unique identity for each one of these cells. And the other is, well, it's gonna be on the exam, right? So complement. Complement is like booby traps. So in an action movie, whenever the hero's being chased by the bad guys, the hero might set up booby traps along the way. So after the hero keeps going, there will be this trap laid for the people who are chasing them so that like they will uh, run through a piece of wire which will which will pull down a tree that'll fall on them or something like that okay that's what complement is like um, the bone marrow and the thymus the bone marrow and the thymus they are like military bases here on planet earth okay the military if we're fighting alien invaders uh, we've got to first train the soldiers that will be fighting in our army those will be our military bases here at home. So when I say that the bone marrow and thymus are like military bases at home, I mean the bone marrow and the thymus, that is where the soldiers and the soldiers in our discussion are going to be all of these guys. That is where our soldiers are going to be coming from. Then we have got the lymph nodes and the spleen. The lymph nodes and the spleen, they are going to be like military bases out out in the field. So again, we're fighting alien invaders, so we might have a military base up on the moon. We might have a military base on Mars, right? And what will we find at a military base on Mars? We will find soldiers that are ready to be sent out into battle. They've already been turned into soldiers. And then we have got all of these cells. And all of these cells, like neutrophils, neutrophils they're like the frontline infantry. Why do I say they're like the frontline infantry? The frontline infantry of any army does not have particularly specialized weapons or training, but they do almost all of the fighting, almost all of winning a war, even now, is done just by infantry. That's what our neutrophils are like. About 90% of keeping you from dying, neutrophils. Then we have got the NK cells. And the NK cells, to me, they are like assassins. Why? Because the NK cells are meant to scope out whenever one of our own cells has been turned to the dark side. So whenever one of our cells has been infected by a virus 
or has turned into a cancer cell, the NK cells, they're the ones that are going to kill those cells, All right? And then we have got the monocytes. I told you that monocytes, they're only monocytes while they're in the bloodstream. Once they leave, they're going to become different specialized kinds of cells. We're mostly just gonna be talking about macrophages and dendritic cells, but there are other ones. And they are surveillance experts. What is surveillance? Surveillance is uh, hiding or concealing yourself out in um, an area where there might be a battle, for example, and gathering intelligence and then bringing that information and maybe some bad guys back to headquarters so that you can uh, create a better strategy to fight your battle. Those are our macrophages, macrophages and monocytes, macrophages and dendritic cells. And then we've got these guys, the B cells and the T cells. A B cell is the same thing as a B lymphocyte. A T cell is the same thing as a T lymphocyte. And these guys are part of what we call the adaptive immune system. And they are kind of like the ultra nerdy, a little bit Asperger's kind of brilliant fellows back in safe places that are going to be designing special weapons and tactics. So let's talk about these things in detail. The complement system. The complement system, sorry. The complement system is going to be the booby traps, right? They're the booby traps. And I think they're kind of fascinating. Now, there are 20 different proteins that can be found that are technically a part of the complement system. And here we see five of them. We've got complement six, complement seven, complement eight, complement nine, complement five. Okay, we got a bunch of them. Uh, I don't know them in this kind of detail, so please don't learn them in this kind of detail. But one of the fascinating things to me about the complement system is that the complement system, these proteins, they're just hanging out there, dissolved in the watery part of your blood, dissolved in the plasma. You would not even know that they are there. Let's imagine I turn you into a bacteria and you're just floating along in the plasma going, wow, this is a great place to be. I am going to cause an infection. And the next thing you know, these proteins that a second ago were dissolved in the watery stuff around you, all of a sudden these things arrange themselves into this crazy uh, uh, thick channel that just like jams through your cell membrane. And then all of your um, cytoplasm, which is inside of here, goes outside of your little bacterial body and your toast, right? That's the kind of thing that complement can do. Uh, when it does that, it is creating a membrane attack complex, right? Um, and that will kill the cell by popping it, which is called cytolysis. But complement can do other things like they can coat bacteria and make those bacteria extra yummy to the cells of your immune system that like to eat bacteria. And they can also do something called enhancing inflammation which we're not gonna be talking about. There's so much we could be talking about, but complement can also do that. In the crash course um, uh, videos, they do talk about humoral immunity. Humoral means the part of your immune system that if I just took some of the watery part of your blood, your plasma, I would find it in there, okay? That's your humoral immunity. Humoral immunity is not attached to cells at all. Um, the two parts, the two most important parts of your humoral immunity are this one, complement, and one we will talk about very late in our lectures, antibodies. And antibodies actually are the more important part of humoral immunity. But let me make this clear. Antibodies are not complement proteins. Right? Let's see, I think. Good. 
we are going to stop there and go on to our next lecture in a moment.